Hello and welcome again to Aviation Event and Aviation TV. Today we are going to Cologne again to the home office of aviation journalist and, and uh, expert Rüdiger Kernigress of German um, magazine Wirtschaftswoche. Hello Rüdiger, welcome here. And how's the situation on Cologne Airport? Well, it's a bit better than the average airport. Not because we got more passenger flights, but the freight, the cargo flight is what keeps the airport going and keeps us sometimes awake at night, which is at this time of the year, at this time of the season, so to say, is a very good sign because it means that traffic is still rolling, that the supply chains are still intact. And so we we'll probably don't love to be awake at three o'clock in the morning, but it's a reassuring sign that the German economy is still working pretty well. Mm -hmm. And um, by the way, pretty well, Lufthansa Cargo, one of the um, largest uh, mm -hmm. freighter um, fleet of the world um, does use now um, passenger planes to transport freight. How is this possible? Well, half of the world's freight is uh, transported in the belly, so to say, in the lower departments of the aircrafts anyway. And so they use this and they pack, you know, the big parcels, the more voluminous parcels, pack, they pack it on the seats. And so they make up for this. And this means that while the passenger traffic is down by about 90 percent, cargo traffic, at least in Frankfurt Airport, is down by only 25 percent. That means three quarters of the world's freight that goes to Frankfurt is still working. And that's, again, just like our nightly traffic that's keeping us awake, a good sign that supply chains to the export oriented German economy are still working. That's good. By the way, working. Which airlines, due to your estimations, will be maybe even stronger after this uh, heavy crisis? And which ones will maybe be grounded forever? Well, that's a bit of a tricky question because nobody knows. The big blank thing in this equation is state subsidies. So if an airline like, say, Alitalia, who is, has proven to be not, you know, more like a zombie, can survive because the Italian government is willing to put much, much more money in there than they did before, where others like, you know, Air Baltic, which is a very efficient and very nice air aircraft operator, they might run into trouble because their governments might not have such deep pockets and fund their operations longer. So we might have consolidation bizarre. So this makes it even more open. So it's hard to answer your question. I hope It makes sense and that the big carriers like Lufthansa and Air France, KLM and IAG will prevail and become even stronger. But there's a stronger likelihood that we have more state subsidized carriers and absurd consolidation. Mm -hmm. A concrete question going back, going to the north of Europe, Norway, they have the money, that's for sure. Will they um, help Norwegian? It depends. I mean, If, if the crisis has one good point, then it shows the importance of aviation to the economy. And mm. if your airline is gone, all of a sudden you feel the, the gap and you feel the loss in value, the loss in value and all that. And this might, you know, make Norwegian government reconsider and help them even more because there was a bit of indirect help with the finance things uh, for the fleet and they had put in indirectly money uh, out of, you know, the state's fund or uh, big uh, companies. And so Norwegian might survive, but still they have basic problems. And if the government money runs out, then they're in the same dire straits than they were before. Mm -hmm. And coming to you personally, um, um, how are you, you personally handling this crisis, these restrictions? And how is Wirtschaftswoche, the magazine, still be printed and still be online if everybody just stays home, even the journalists? Digitalization. When yeah. I started, like 30 years back, you know, they would have, or even 10 years back, it would not have been possible. You know, we have yeah. our conferences each day, twice or three times via Skype or the new generation, the baby Zoomers, we call them because of another program. And this is what keeps us going, you know, and we can still phone, we can work over the internet, we have indirect access to our uh, editorial systems, and this is what, what makes it possible. But the downside is, in these times, everybody is, you know, willing to work even more. And so the lines between 
private life and job life are blurring even more. And this is, you know, can be pretty tiring. Okay, thank you very much for these insights. Um, maybe we can have an update in um, in about two weeks. Um, maybe situation will change, uplift in the kind of restrictions. We don't know. Um, last, really last, last question. When do you think that aviation will be back to normal, back to the scheduled flights as we had it before, more or less? How long does it take? Again, two answers. We will be back to more or less normal operation. I hope at least in two or three months. But big hurdle is if Germany is working again, it doesn't mean that our destinations are working again. Mm. So Italy and even the United States, which is the most important uh, traffic market, especially for Lufthansa, they might be in even bigger problems in two or three months. So this is the very open question. And the other, will we get back to two na 2019 figures? That's not any time soon. It can be years, as Carsten Spohr, Lufthansa CEO, said, because we might see a scaling back in globalization. We might see more nearshoring and we might see less business travel because of the systems that we use right now, like the Skypes and the Zooms of this world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See you soon and stay healthy. I won't go away.